Hey there game makers and welcome back to another VFX tutorial. Of course, this is not just for game maker. You can actually use the idea for uh, Unity, Unreal, Godot, one of those guys here. When you're saying just, eh, I'm not using game maker. I want to uh, have the wind effect on the other engine. Well, you can just use then the shader based version, which is on the left side here. And of course, this is the one up indie here, patented. No, of course not. <laughs> it's free to use and abuse. Uh, one up indie's cheap way how to accomplish that without a lot of hassle. And this is actually the easy way. And this is the more common, standard, old school way, which you see in a lot of other games. So, one, once again, what is it? It's basically foliage. Where, so, stuff which you want to move a little bit. And then you want to have kind of a soft movement in there like wind or whatever some kind of pattern and then it needs to look nice and of course here once again old school way shader or here uh, effect a game maker just game maker specific thing which you can do also the advantage on the left side is it looks more crisper on the right side it's easier and faster to this is basically the whole part and of course the shader stuff um game maker does a little quirk way which you need to take into account alrighty so let's start off with the easy peasy way so how do we do the easy one up in this way so this is part one we just slap a new asset layer plop in some um, trees so for example this guy here of course nothing is happening now so let's um, click on our asset layer apply a filter and an effect Scroll down, where are you underwater? And as you can see, it does work. And of course, we need to disable all the default stuff which we don't want. So basically, no tinting, no adding any colors, no glints, no chromatic stuff. Chromatic speed zero here, go away. And of course, maybe uh, this is already looking pretty dope. But of course, you wouldn't be doing this the more. The better way is basically split up the part which is moving. So here, um, the bush, the, 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 for example, for a tree, the top part, and then have a static layer like this, and place the bottom part in here, just uh, something like this. Here we go, because the stump is, is not moving. And then this looks nice. Of course, here you can apply this trick also for um, palms and stuff not too good looking but of course still possible but hey it does work out of the box and well you're pretty good to go so this is kind of neat so let's get rid of uh, that layer because that's just additional stuff which we don't need uh, uh, uh. here we go so that is the one way and the second way is described in detail on this block of XOR so highly recommended and basically you're just taking an image and then you apply on the Y side kind of a distortion so it kind of is in a sinus wave form distorted along the Y axis and then through time you just change the values and that's pretty much it this is the whole thing of course you can find a download project so this is how it looks under the hoods get rid of you and then this is basically it so this is the code for that um don't want to bore you with that kind of stuff so basically what i did here is one thing which is time because you need to apply it uh, and then height and width which this is not in his example project but i thought like hey we just pass that also into the shader and then we run this thing down so for example the idea is just like this so for example once we would start it it's basically distorting sinus wave style and as you can see it is snake like in shape that is what we do but of course uh well that is that part how does the object look like so once again i'm just gonna rush through it because most of the people won't be too interested in that so basically we have a uniform for the time which we pass into the shader I also do that with the width and the height of our uh, object here. So here we are placing object on instances layers. So here uh, instances and then these guys are there. And then 
we, we draw on ourselves and bake it in between the shader. So this is the shader part, start, passing in those values and then resetting and then well, drawing in between. This is the whole magic, nothing going on. And of course here, um, well, depending what kind of speed you want to have, it will go faster and slower. This has one small little issue. So let's say, for example, if you do it out of the box like this, so for example, you just have your sprite and you want to do it, you will encounter this little uh, not funny part, which is that here. So for example, you see it's kind of clipping and taking parts which are outside here. There was one solution. Wow. Uh, mentioned that you for example can just do it something like this which I don't think it does work but you can uh, let's go 512 by something like this so just make the outside of it like really huge so it cannot clip outside and then of course go into the texture group and then just say like hey automatically crop disable that so this is normally on it just flag it as off and then once we start it it shouldn't be doing that mm. as you can see even though the the box outside is like really huge it's still still taking some stuff out so how can we remedy that well we just go into our sprite itself and then go and say separate texture page and then this issue is alleviated. That's pretty much it. But of course, if you got huge texture pages, each tree, so if you've got 4K texture pages, just one texture page for this guy here, which is kind of like, <laughs> not the best idea, but this is at least um, well, a solution which can work. This is of course a game maker related. I don't know how the other engines handle texture page stuff, so here I'm a little bit out of ideas, but this is basically, once again, the cheap man's way on the right side, which is kind of nice. And then the default object oriented way, which most people do. So hopefully that was of use to you guys, because that thing is cool and you can, you can just use and abuse this effect quite a lot in the background. And it gives, you know, a level a little bit more liveliness, which is kind of nice. But of course, please don't, let the, uh, the the stump of the tree <laughs> wiggle because that looks kind of off. Alrighty, that was it then from my side. Have a good one. One up indie.